laris Bermanis kita lari sampai habis Garisan penamat juga tempat siap saat Di sini sana situ Masuk tingkat keluar pintu Berdesut sebelesit Tak tersangkut tak terjepit Niat bukan untuk sembunyi Cuma laju bila berlari Meneroga mengembara bersiar-siar Senangkan hati Kan ku senap suasana Pandangan bunyian rasa Kita telah hilang jangan dilihat something that's put together really for the beauty of it uh, the, the true essence of it you know the, the innocence of it i'm excited to see what they come up with yo what's up uh, zero one of the founders of the rascals collective It's a collective based primarily on artists who practice in the dark arts of graffiti and street art. When we chose the name Rascals, it's about a lot of mischief, a lot of having fun. And the other side is to educate people, to create new initiatives and push what graffiti and street art can be. Not only in Singapore, but also around the Southeast Asian region. I don't think life should be about a central focus because that's too narrow and straight. What I like to do is observe people, observe space, observe the emotions in the space as well. So, and you got to appreciate the space for everything that it is, whether it's positive or negative. My process is always about bringing out unheard stories, not the general narrative, but I want to find like small little stories, small little pockets of spaces that highlights things that you don't really see. You know, and I, I normally put it into my artwork. So I think the idea of mixtape for the side wall, the mural, is getting ten different artists, ten different styles, and putting them together and giving them one theme. Some of the works will overlay over each other. So I think that is the essence of mixtape: something that's put together without. Proper thought, really, but it's just for the beauty of it, uh, the, the true essence of it, the innocence of it, the attempt.
to create something cohesive. That was what I was going through in my head. You know, and for mixtape itself, it cannot just be visual. Right? Mixtape talks about music, talks about sound. So I'm also getting each artist to select a piece of sound or song that could be created into a playlist. So it could be anything. I think some of them were really thinking about creating their own sounds and recording their own sounds and creating songs. The essence of it should be what you feel about Kampung Glam represents. It could be the subculture, it could be the traditional culture, right? It could be the chickens of Kampung Glam, it could be the cats of Kampung Glam. And then uh, as a viewer on a mural, you can look at... It's probably, it probably won't look like your typical QR code. It's probably going to be a logo or a symbol that's generated as a code itself, as, a, as something that you could scan. So, and it will bring you to the playlist itself. So, instead of just, you know, just looking at a mural physically and taking a photo, you can actually hear. I'm excited to see what they come up with. Twenty twenty has made things a little different for all of us. With travel restrictions and safe management measures in place, we've had to adjust the way we spend our time outdoors to hang out with our friends and family. If you are keen to sightsee from the comfort of your homes, fret not. Now you can explore the vibrant Singapore River as we navigate through a three point two km trail of scenery, history, food, and entertainment. First on our list is the historical Boat Key. Situated at the southern bank of the Singapore River, Boat Key is known for being a bustling commercial hub. Known to locals as the belly of the cup, in reference to its curved shape, which resembled the fish, Boat Key was once a location where many go-downs or warehouses were built. Funny you should ask. As you stroll along Boat Key, the path seems to dissect history. On one side are old, meticulously preserved shop houses. On the other, you'll spy sleek skyscrapers. Take your time to admire the carefully preserved shop houses along the area. While it evokes a timeless sense of nostalgia, don't you think these shop houses are also Instagram worthy? Even hard to impress design connoisseurs will be wowed by these colorful heritage shop houses. Boat Key houses Singapore's oldest suspension bridge. This is Kavanagh Bridge, unofficially known as the Love Bridge to some, was a location for a lot of proposals and wedding shoots. Built in 1869, it links Commercial Square on the south bank to the government quarter on the north bank of the river. Based on the vintage police notices that are still up, no vehicles, even cattle and horses, are allowed to cross to this date. What's more, there's art along the way. From the Kavanagh Bridge, continue your trail and you'll come across some of Singapore's remarkable structures along the riverside. Whether you're prone to nostalgia or keeping an eye firmly fixed on the future, the tiny enclave that is Boat Key is definitely worth a visit. Second on our list is Singapore River's F&B and Entertainment Arena, Clark Key. Whether you're a born and bred local, long-time expat or in the no tourist, you've probably been to this vibrant hotspot. Well, for starters, food, food and more food! No trip to Clark Key is complete without tasting its diverse offerings. Head over to Clark Key Central and treat yourself to some of Singapore's tastiest fares. Not only do these restaurants offer delectable cuisine but also a magnificent view of the river. Oh, and you can even stroll along the riverside after a hearty meal. See that bridge? That is the Reed Bridge, also known as the Malacca Bridge to some. Perhaps the most known bridge along Singapore River, this became a popular meeting spot. Who would have thought Clark Key hides a heritage gem? Behold the architectural wonder that is the old Hill Street Police Station. 
Famed for its Technicolor shutter and new Renaissance design, this rainbow painted structure is a perfect spot for your next Instagram post. If there's a spot by the river that gives us the chillest ambiance, it's got to be the tranquil and lush Robertson Key. Well, since you've asked, while it's quieter than Boat Key and Clark Key, Robertson Key's beauty lies in its laid-back charm. If you're looking for a place to relax and unwind in the city, the answer is simply Robertson Key. Whether it's the large trees and shady nooks or the lax yet lavish environment, there's just something enticing about Robertson Key's chilled riverside. I for one think that Robertson Key's laid-back air makes getting some downtime fully possible. Running across Robertson Key is this significant bridge that boasts its unique multicolor design. With its vibrant hues, one simply can't miss Singapore's Bridge of Art, the Alcove Bridge. Do not leave without taking a picture of this kaleidoscope wonder. If you can't visit Singapore River anytime soon, I hope you've enjoyed this virtual trail. After all, what's not to love about the Singapore River? Find out more about the Singapore River at www.singapore-river.sg Georgette Chen holds a very special place in Singapore's art history. As the first female artist to achieve international acclaim, the impact of her work on Singapore's visual arts scene continues to influence generations of Singapore artists. It's been 20 years since the last museum retrospective of Georgette Chen, and we've really built upon the work that the previous retrospectives have done. In this exhibition, we'll be sharing with the public new and extensive archival materials, including newspaper clippings, photographs, as well as exhibition paraphernalia. Despite being well-known as a strict teacher, Chen was well-loved and well-respected by her students. She will continue to give advice and support to her students even after they become professional artists. With this exhibition headlining our fifth anniversary, we hope that Georgia Chen's accomplishments as an artist living and working in different parts of the world will inspire audiences to defy boundaries and forge their own paths. Welcome to The Projector. We're on the fifth floor of the Golden Mile Tower in what feels like a car park, probably because we are in a car park, but inside we're gonna find one of the shining lights of Singapore's creative art scene. So let's go check it out. The Projector is in the, currently the only independent cinema space in Singapore. We're kind of like off the beaten track as you probably found out. Yeah, I did find that out. <laughs> it's a little bit hard to get here, but uh, it's a rewarding experience. This unique building once housed a 1,500-seat cinema called the Golden Theatre, making it the largest in Singapore. 
The projector retains the original walls, the floors and the seat mechanisms, and it's this mix of old and new that really gives the space authenticity. I think an interesting fact was that it used to show propaganda films as well, North oh, Korean okay. films, and then it became like a soft porn kind of cinema. But the seats are completely new. Um, <laughs> This is where we show most of our more serious uh, art house films. As you can see, it's more intimate. The other room was very green. I assume this is the, the red room, is it? Yeah, this is the red room. We do hold the uh, more fun films down here. We want people to have fun down here. Just come here, have a good time, have a drink. So this is a, a bit of a change of scenery. I can't say I've ever found a bar in a car park before. Yeah, this is one of our newer additions uh, within the last couple of months. This is where we hold most of our after parties for the films that we had. Even if you're not a film buff, the projector is well worth a visit for its old world charm. And the fact that after the screening, well, you can even go for a party in the car park. It all started from the day when my father passed me his old cameras, you know. He got interest towards photography. So he said, okay, you, you want to continue photography, you want to take something, you can have it as my present. And that's the day I started. One of my cousin, he was an artist. The day once camera come in, all the painter who do realistic picture, the portrait picture, everybody lost their job. So based on his profession, cameras are their enemies. Then I said, okay, why don't we do something new? We accumulate all your enemies, put it at one place, and we do it in a unique way what others have not done it. Then he say, it's on, let's try, and that's how all it started. Uh, if you take a PGN camera, it took about eight to nine years for us to found it. It is designed in such a way that a PGN can carry. I love all my collection. One is Pearl's first button camera. About 100 years back, they can create such a unique thing. There is a button you can put in your coat and they can control it here. The button can open and take a picture for you. See how clever those days the spies were. If you talk about a unique piece, yeah, we do have a machine gun used by Japanese military in the World War II. They use this gun to train the Air Force people. If you see, there is a lens. If you click, you don't get bullets. It will shoot you. I don't believe in a shortcut can make something good. Bridgetus is one of my personal brands and now I start to let it run by all my apprentices. My goal is to bring back the original house to make a good suit, how real tailors must to be. We use the best quality fabric and also we are using the best interlining fabric. It takes about 8 weeks to finish a bespoke suit. After taking measurement, we will start to do the pattern drafting. One or two fitting sessions will be done and after revising the draft, it will take us almost 80 hours to finish the jacket by hand. We are trying to get something rich to the customer demand and request what he want. So in the whole processing, the customer can enjoy very personalised service.
Many of the tailors have already get out from the traditional. They find an easier way, faster way to process a suit. Don't care about what is the quality will turn out. Nowadays, not many people are willing to carry on the craft. It requires a lot of time and effort. I found that tailoring is what interested me the most. In fact, I love the traditional craftsmanship, so I don't wish the craft to die. We don't believe shortcut can get a good suit. So every step you are follow exactly. So that's my idea, to start the precision. The Museum of Toys, our collection is made up of toys from more than 40 countries. The countries are like Bulgaria, even made in Singapore toys. We have no windows in this museum. And the huge facade behind is to protect from the harmful rays of the sunlight because our toys are all in mint or near mint condition. We showcase about more than 8,000 pieces of toys over here. This is less than 10% of the owner's collection. Uh, remaining 90% we store in warehouses. Is it called Takyo is because the Milo tin, there's always a boy kicking a ball. So what we do is we use Australian recipe Milo, mix it with bourbon and let it sit for about two days. I would like people to watch the piece with an open mind. Don't think of dance, don't think of theatre, don't think of boundaries or the pandemic or anything. It's just whatever you get out of it is what it is. Hi, this is Raka from Chalk Productions. Chalk Productions is a centre for dance with a focus on training and dance making. We create contemporary works, drawing from the classical forms of Urisi and Chow. The works we create are experimental and contemporary. You could say we are deconstructing the form and developing a new vocabulary which is Asian and it's for Asian bodies. It's something that's developed in the region. We have a structured training every day. So we train in the basics of Urasi exercises which are based mainly on Chow, which works on the balance and stamina and the center. Then we go on to practicing traditional items. The traditional items give you a structure, it gives you speed and it just gives you a sense of freedom. My inspiration is literature. I read a lot so I get inspired by poetry and fiction mostly. And of course the current situation has a huge influence in what we do and what we read.
Behind these walls was inspired by the phase one of the circuit breaker. You know, being stuck at home, not being able to come to the studio. So we had to kind of work within limitations and keep going. That's where that piece came from about limitations and within the limit, working within the limitations. The movements, you could call it structured improvisation. We kept to a line and it was like working within boundaries. And another thing we drew from was the Urisi form. The form was developed from temple sculptures. A lot of when it was reconstructed by the gurus or the masters, they looked at the temple sculptures. So a lot of it was inspired from there, the sculptural movement of the form and the structure of being within a line. When I dance, I forget everything. It's just about being there and being present. You feel this is why I'm alive.
When people think about perfumes, they're most closely associated with the big French brands. But cultures that have the most links to the art of perfumery, I would say, are the Arabic cultures and actually the Indian cultures. I'm actually in this trade because of my grandfather. He started a perfume shop here in the 1930s. A lot of what you see over here, we used to just keep it in the back room. You know, it's a messy process, uh, but now people want to see the process more and more. Like an open kitchen, people want to see what happens. By doing it this way, you actually become a part of the process and uh, you get to choose your ingredients. It's not just a finished product that you're buying, but you know, you've inserted yourself into the process as well. Something fresh and clean, like, you know, clean cotton, bed linen. Uh, like clean skin? Yes, yeah. clean skin. I think it needs a bit more pepper. Bottle it up for me, please. I hope that people start to see perfumes as an experience rather than just as a finished product that you pick up off a shelf. Instagrammable. Being Instagrammable is all well and good, but the food's got to be great as well. Here we have the cauliflower furikake, which smells super enticing. I can't wait to dig in. Vegetables never tasted so good. Got the grilled portobello salad right in front of me and I can't wait to tuck in. Here's the eggs benedict and the eggs are the best in Singapore. Organic grade A eggs. Oh, check that out. Check this out, you've got a whole soft shell crab to yourself. No wonder it's a bestseller. There's no better combination than waffles chicken, watermelon, and maple syrup. Nice coffee flavor, and you see the color change as you drink it. Really fun stuff. Here is the boozy Sadap Chendol milkshake, that kick of rum at the end. I'm a fan of this. There are bars, and then there are cool bars by the beach. Singapore is a tropical island, and if you want to make the most out of the trip, be sure to soak up the sun and dip your toes in the sand with an ice cold beer or cocktail in your hand. I'm now at Seaside Siloso Beach Sentosa, where you'll find a collective of bars such as Sandbar, Coast, and breaking the charm and rustic beach afternoon vibe is Bikini Bar, where the legendary quarterly beach party, Bikini Rocks, is held. Let's check it out. Heart-thumping live music, irresistible drink and food offers, fun beach games led by Bikini Babes. Bikini Bar comes complete with a pool table and an island bar. Bringing some of the best homegrown bands in Singapore, be sure to join in the fun held every quarter. You'll be forgiven for mistaking this as a Bali beach. 
If you're looking for something a bit more laid back and intimate by the beach, then you can't miss Coasts at Seaside, located right beside Bikini Bar. With Instagram-worthy backdrops, Coasts offers a shaded deck, beach seatings and sunbeds to the water's edge. What I'm having is the slipper lobster spaghetti and banana and chocolate pie paired with an ice-cold Cronenberg lager. Cheers! After a hearty lunch, what better way to spend your lazy evenings than to rest and relax on one of Sandbar's new and comfortable beanbag lounges? And if you're still hungry, remember to try their roasted meats, mini burgers and tasty desserts. The ultimate beach dining experience is never complete without live music spun by Sandbar's very own DJ. Glorious sunset, spectacular daily fireworks, Sometimes, the best experiences come free. Seaside, the ultimate beachfront experience. Check out the website below for more. Experience the award-winning Par 72 18-hole golf course. Spanning 6,493 meters, the course features undulating fairways, varying lengths of holes, and dramatic pot bunkers that brings hours of challenges and enjoyment for golfers. Marina Bay Golf Course is one of the few golf courses in Singapore open for night golfing. So don't let the fun stop when the sun sets. Marina Bay Golf Course offers everything a discerning golfer could ask for. Who can say no to an all-day breakfast, especially when each dish is inspired by breakfast from all over the world? I'm here at Wild Honey, a breakfast place that's always buzzing with activity any time of the day. A wildly popular restaurant, Wild Honey's menu features an incredible choice of breakfast from different countries. Think Tunisian, Norwegian, Canadian, Scandinavian and many more. It's what I call a global gastronomical adventure. If you fancy something vegetarian, there's a huge range to choose from. Today, I'm having the Flinders Lane. It comes with a crispy base topped with perfect poached eggs, grilled asparagus, sliced avocado, spicy tomato and sesame seed and nuts for an added texture. Highly recommended for brain food lovers. And I always pair my breakfast with a cup of excellent coffee from the Common Man Coffee Roasters. Awarded the Certificate of Excellence by TripAdvisor in 2019 and voted Best Breakfast in Singapore for many years, Wild Honey has gone from breakfast to breakfast and has opened its third outlet in the sprawling South Beach Avenue. Wild Honey opens from as early as 8am but do check out each outlet's operating hours. You'll find Wild Honey at these three locations. Wild Honey Mandarin Gallery, Wild Honey Scott Square and Wild Honey South Beach. Hanging by the edge of memories Unfaced by the constant ticking Standing in between these plot twists Told so many stories I'm still writing more history Even when there's no one listening No telling what it's gonna be Come the next minute would you even notice what I've gone missing? God knows where we'll end up We can't help but find it oh, 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 oh. Time is crawling, pausing
Hi, my name is Fami. I'm from Nadi, Singapura. One of the irreplaceable elements in the traditional Malay music or the events and ceremonies is the sound of the drums. Rebana or gendang, a collective term used to describe the drums, has been the core of Nadi Singapura's exploration, expansion and creation. Rampak Berbano is one of Nadi Singapura's earliest works which features a mix of rhythm, distinctively performed as an ensemble on the Rebana Asli, also known as the Gendang Melayu.
A famous freediver once said that scuba divers dive to look around and freedivers dive to look within, and that really spoke to me. I went to Hawaii, the big island of Kona, and I tried um, just diving off of shore. All of a sudden, I could hear the humpbacks offshore. So loudly, they was reverberating in my chest. You couldn't hear them from the surface, and you wouldn't have been able to hear them if you were scuba diving. And so I thought, oh wow, this is really amazing. You get these incredible experiences. I should try this. And so that's where I started. I'm Chris. I would describe myself as being post-corporate. I used to work for a company, and um, now I'm doing things for myself. Freediving can change someone's life, um, and has changed my life. Um, it is a mind-body discipline. It opens up experiences that are not available to everybody. In fact, only a tiny fraction of the world will ever be able to experience the things that you can see and feel while you're freediving. <sighs> my hands are still tingling and my heart is still beating really fast right now. It was amazing. When I accidentally hit someone, it really felt like there was a zombie touching me. It feels so big in there. It's intense, it's scary, and it's a workout. It was insane. It was so much fun. It was awesome. I felt like I was in a zombie apocalypse myself. so real. I felt like you were walking upside down. I was so into the game. He just kept shouting. It was out of the ordinary. It was so fun. Not much longer now, Raph. We just Please! Need to no! More glasses. shopping! Um, hello? Wanna escape? Where? Somewhere awesome! Hell yeah! <laughs> Alright! Yeah, Singapore is trampoline parks, but bounce is so much more than that. <laughs> Alright! Yo, Ruffy, can you do a flip? No, can you show me how? So all you need to do, one, up! Flipping is just one of the things you can learn at Flight Academy, where one of Bounce's awesome experts teach you how to do some super cool tricks. Good, Ruffy. Much better now. He's <laughs> right. Play the 10 tricks on the freestyle list and get a free 2 for one voucher. It is as easy as the sit drop. Good. If you want even more of a challenge, check this out. You ready to lose to a kid? You got it, get it up! up, up! X-Park is like Ninja Warrior, but way cooler. I know I make it look really easy, but seriously, this is not for wusses. some shopping, but can we take a break for just an hour? I know this great place. They do Aussie coffee. It's just around the corner.
Well, the first meal I cooked was kind of a disaster. My parents came over uh, for dinner and I decided to roast a duck, which I don't know why I did that. I had no idea what I was doing. I remember uh, Dad very sort of uh, politely saying, um, yes, it takes a certain skill to cook duck. <laughs> You know, my DNA as a chef really is so ingredient directed and often ingredients just speak for themselves. When you live in a big city like Singapore, you often can get detached from ingredients and detached from the source. As a cook, you always have to take time outside of the kitchen, outside of your usual environment. So coming here to the Kelong is always a great source of inspiration because we can really find a lot of different things that are uh, sustainable and local. Uh, that helps us to bring our own cooking to another level back at Stella. The best cooking is really something that's very personal. Uh, it's the personal experience of exploration. It's amazing, even today we discovered new uh, flavours right here at Kalong. There's so much discovery and there's so much immediate enjoyment, I think, when you see, get the reaction uh, from people uh, to food. It reflects your personality, really. The day of the chef being the one that says, okay, this is what you're gonna eat, and that's that is gone. So having this connection with where the ingredients come from, I try to bring that into our whole environment in terms of Stella, all that rest of the chefs, I want them to feel equally as passionate about the sourcing, about the producers, because I know that that just always elevates the flavors that we want to produce to another level. As the sun goes down and the lights come on, you want to give people an experience. There was one that actually made someone cry once. That was the first time I've ever experienced that here. I would drop music from Africa and uh, you know, I play stuff from Latin America. I play a bit of hip hop and like I'll move in and out to kind of fit the, the space. Yeah? I'm, I'm so lucky to have a view like that. From the time I started work here, this is the one thing that always I always marvel at. I never get tired of this view. The club sound beyond 10 p.m. is always a little bit more mainstream, a little bit more digestible for uh, the people who come up here. Because you not only have tourists, you have hotel guests, and you do have people who want to club. I think there's something for everyone. <laughs> good comments from from the crowd everyone's like oh you know it's really cool to hear music from my country and you know like say lovey being quite an international uh, destination hi i'm valentina and i moved here in singapore three months ago i've heard about this italian restaurant so let's see if this italian restaurant can have my food craving the handmade the squid ink uh, takalurini and then you have the fin the clay oysters kaluga queen caviar hokkaido sea urchin and sardinia potaga this is the first time that i have homemade pasta in singapore and it's amazing it really reminds me of pasta that my mom cooked for me so good this meat is so tender and juicy and it's very well cooked I enjoyed my time here having good drinks, listening to a jazz band in this beautiful location. And I can definitely say that this is the best Italian restaurant I've ever tried here in Singapore. But it's one of those things where you, you never actually make the decision to start it. And that was probably the most important part of this whole process was actually just committing to the fact that I was going to spend years. I, I didn't know it was going to be three years, but I knew it was going to be a long time. 
And I went through periods of confidence and, and, and near depression on this ship. If you look at something for so long and you spend so much time working on it, you lose all confidence that it's going to be of interest to anybody, anybody else. So that's why I guess I was so excited when the film was released and, and people sort of appreciated the work that had gone into it. So it started to feel a bit more worthwhile again. And that it wasn't so much that I wanted to show off or show people the city, the city growing. I think I actually wanted to see it myself. Singapore's got nowhere to, nowhere, nowhere to grow. It's not like a lot of places in the world where cities sprawl and get bigger. In Singapore, things tend to get taken down before they get built up. It has to be creative in how it plans for development. And so for me, that's, that's a story. It's like, it's like the modernization of Singapore and just seeing it almost reinvent itself every, every few years. The way that I wanted to shoot it, I didn't just want to have permanent cameras which would create a, a very common time-lapse effect where you see a cloud that appears and a cloud that disappears. I wanted the whole film to flow organically. So I had to do a lot of planning and started with about 30 core shots. By the end of the film, it grew to about 70 locations around the city. And then it took a lot of, lot of discipline. And it can be a little bit of a lonely existence when you spend three, three and a half years working on a project. I don't think, for example, even my wife and my daughter really know how much went into this film. But I really do enjoy, enjoy being like an outside observer. Uh, and even though the techniques have changed throughout all of my films, there's still a sense that it's almost like you're in a separate place when you're looking at the, at, at the city. Um, so I'm not really getting in people's faces with cameras. I'm more just somebody who's sort of quietly off to the side looking at the world from a, from a distance. Whoever said money can't buy happiness has never been to IMM. Let's go! This is Singapore's largest outlet mall with over 90 outlet stores. And the best thing is, they all offer up to 80% discounts on international brands all year round. And to get here is easy. Just take the short walk from Jurong East MRT Station via the Jaywalk Link Bridge. Food, glorious food. If you can name it, you can eat it right here at IMM. I think I'll start with some Asian fusion. Just look at this. Bali Thai's famous seafood pad thai noodles. I'm finally ready to hunt for a whole new wardrobe. But where better place to start than a woman's most important accessory, the handbag. Pay attention, gents. Check out Coach for an unparalleled collection of quality and craftsmanship at irresistible discounts. Visit Furla, where you'll find the perfect bag for any occasion. This chic design was especially created for this store. Head over to Kate Spade, New York for something playfully sophisticated. I probably have enough already, but I cannot miss Outlet by Club 21. This outlet features a well-curated collection of both men's and women's apparel. Ooh, I found the perfect dress. Sakor is one of my favorite lifestyle brands that caters for men, women, and kids. And the best part, you can get up to 75% discount any time of the year. From heels to flats and wedges to sneakers, Charles and Keith has the perfect fit for you at discounted prices. A lady can never have too many shoes. Shopping is a very physical activity. Luckily, there's an abundance of athleisure wear at IMM too. At Under Armour, you can kit yourself from head to toe while saving up to 50% off recommended retail prices. If you're a visiting tourist, be sure to pick up the IMM Tourist Privilege Booklet at the customer service counter on level one to enjoy exclusive offers. And if all that isn't enough to satisfy your shopping appetite, you could always head over to Westgate or J-Cube Malls, which are just a short walk away from IMM. IMM, Westgate and J-Cube are the ultimate mega mall experiences in Singapore. It's been a fantastic day of retail therapy and exercise. I've got all this to take home and I've saved more than I've paid. Better get a cab.
Visit IMM, Singapore's largest outlet mall today, and experience shopping like never before.